Excellent. Oh, God. I'm not very familiar with teapots. Right. Do you want me to talk about the biscuits? Um, I don't eat a lot of biscuits um, because once I start, I can't really stop. Um, but yes, I, I do like this because I like them too much, particularly shortbreads. Very good shout. Um, but also a chocolate digestive, which hasn't made the cut, but it's fine. Go for it. What is it, a Viennese something or other? Viennese whirl, I want to say. Viennese whirl. Okay, let's give it a whirl. Mm. There's gonna be a lot of me crunching, isn't there? ASMR. So, make a herbal tea, don't throw up, is, there's two separate things. They're things that I would do um, if I was feeling very anxious. So I would, I mean, there's no caffeine, so I would not be having tea or coffee. I would have herbal tea instead. And then I often feel like I'm going to throw up when I feel anxious, so it's like, don't. Throw up. Not herbal tea will make me throw up. I feel very calm now the record's out. It's a, it was a very long process. Huge build up over such a long time that you can really go down <laughs> lots of different avenues in your brain. And so now that it's also out, I just feel like great, like really calm, like really ready to make another one as well. Cause I can't really start a new record until I've shelved an old one. But I think the writing took, oh my God, I don't know, like a year, a year and a half. It was, it took so long. And that's why I made that covers album. Um, that was kind of because I was trying to write Big Side, but I wasn't getting anywhere fast. So I just thought, let's be creative, put something else out, cut out the middleman. Like I don't have to just blank page it. I can work with someone else's stuff. But then even after that, it was kind of digging back in and just, yeah. It, was, it felt like kind of one song every two and a half months or something. It was just like so slow. Nostalgia is, I think, something that I, it's a really uncomfortable feeling for me and always has been. I was very strange, even when I was a kid, I always kind of felt this sense of nostalgia, particularly in the summer, and it used to make me feel very odd and sort of sad. I remember when I went to art college and did my art foundation, I, all of my work was sort of about that, um, and I hadn't really looked at it from that perspective again until the writing of Big Sigh. I think it kind of developed as I, was writing, um, particularly with the, with the dynamic range of the record and the instrumentation and the production, where it was the choices of these, these pushing these parameters and pushing those opposites and have the kind of organic next to the industrial and things like that. I think it gave this really clear feeling of like before and after. There's like a shift, like there's something there. And that I realized was very much this kind of slightly more carefree childlike almost like illustration from a child's book view of the world with the kind of crushing realities of being an actual adult which we all know and love like when i talk about it with polly like she's always like i could not wait to go she's a very very capable responsible person she's, okay. she's smashing adulthood i think she has been since she was like 18 whereas i'm still like can we just play hide and seek in the garden for a few hours I wanted it to be like subtle, um, I guess the brashness of any human friend, I felt like I needed to maybe push back slightly against that and keep it really vulnerable and understated rather than um, trying to slap everyone around the face all the time. I mean, relationships are really easy to write about. It's, they pull up a lot of emotions, but they're also being in a relationship is, I think, where you learn the most about yourself. Like you can reflect back on who you are through the eyes of the other person. So I think that's why I'm very drawn to it because I'm constantly sort of searching for that like self-reflection and who I am in any given time and place, whatever. Um, and growth, the idea of growth. I think you grow the most in relationships and you, you know, it's, they're huge, big defining moments in your life. So they're always there floating around. And even if I'm pulling from relationships from five, six, 10 years ago, it's always with a reflection of like who I was then and who I am now. Um, but when it comes to the other person, you know, I really never ever want to make music that would upset anyone or pull someone into a situation um it's, it's a one-sided argument if you will like I, it's not particularly fair so i don't like name check and things like that because i think it's important that it's very much just like this is this is me and my perspective and these are my emotions and you did this and you did that and you know it's kind of it's it's not about that it's about how you've seen yourself in a new light i guess
I feel very settled now in my life. I feel like I turned 30 within that time, which is also such a cliche, but like I, there's something I feel much more like in my skin and like quieter. Um, there's less of a constant hum, uh, which is also arguably why it's maybe slightly harder to access some of those more chaotic emotions um, if you're just feeling pretty good, um, which is again such a trope, but it, it's just a trope for a reason, it, it's true. Um, which I'm not saying tortured artists is a thing we should uh, try and be, but I think um, you have to start thinking about different ways of working or different ways of ac accessing things when you're not a kind of chaotic mid-twenties running around shagging everything and causing chaos. Like, that's literally like so much easier to write about. If I hear tracks from the first like EPs and things that I was releasing, I sound like a terrified choir boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I feel like now, Certainly the journey going through, it was the second album really that shifted that and into the third. It's like, because I was singing about stuff that had so much more attitude, I really had to like push myself and be really present and like change the way I was singing to reflect the lyrics. And that's really scary. Like I sang like a choir boy because I just wanted to get it right. I wanted to hit the right notes. And I was just only thinking about that rather than like performance. Um, and the more of a performance you do, the more like you can look like an idiot. So that's like really scary, but I did all that stuff. And it's like now then when I came to Big Side, like, I'm singing more about the kind of quieter, more emotional things, but my voice is so much more confident when you hear it. It's like it's it's able to inhabit so much more emotions um, because I've had that whole growth and confidence through all of that. Whereas before, like I said, it was just like, oh my God, the mic's on. You know, someone's listening to me. It's like terrifying. So I put the telly on um, and I have it fairly low down volume wise with subtitles and I will sit with my guitar and watch TV and basically kind of unconsciously be playing my guitar um, and then if something sounds nice it's I will just focus on it for a second start writing something and then if it's properly going somewhere then I just pause the telly and, and start working on it. I have really inane program choices that I put on so I don't have to concentrate. I wouldn't ever put anything on that I actually wanted to like invest in a plot line but it's kind of nicer doing that than maybe sitting at a desk picking up my guitar and being like let's start on an A chord and be like, you know, it's just a bit more, because it's unconscious, it feels so much more like instinctive as if something's just coming out of somewhere. But it is like below deck on the telly or Real Housewives, bad stuff. So what I'm most looking forward to with the touring, but it's also the biggest fear, is curating a set that still has the tracks that people want to hear, because I think that's really important. I'm definitely not one of those artists that's like, I'm never going to play like my big single ever again. It's like, if I'm in the crowd, that's I want to hear a few of those. So I always do that. But how do I take a song like Boyfriend and pull that into the world of Big Side? Because it's, it's the latest record that dictates the world. And I have to try and work out how I can make a set and how I can probably rearrange a lot of those other tracks to actually come into that world which is intimidating, but I think it's also a really nice challenge to have. Um, it, should be, it should be fun, fish. Oh, well, that's an easy one to answer, isn't it? I thought there was a scientific, there's a scientific law about cake and biscuit, that a cake, when it goes stale, goes harder, and a biscuit, when it goes stale, goes softer. So that means a Jaffa cake is a cake, not a biscuit. Shortbread is a classic though. So for dunking purposes, am I allowed to reveal that I've actually got coffee in this cup? You are. I think that maybe the Jaffa cake might win for the dunk, for the coffee and the, the dark chocolate and the orange. Why don't you have one? Yep. Yes. <laughs> Used to be my favorite, mm. Jammy Dodgers, but you know, in the era of the the kids' parties in the late 90s, big bowls of Watsits, and they had those Fox's party rings, Jammy Dodgers, Chocolate Fingers, another great biscuit. Nice. But Jammy Dodgers, I used to love um, pulling them apart and actually pulling the set jam out and then just like chewing on that for a while because it's very chewy. Can you do that now? Um, <laughs> I'm too old to be playing with my biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it would have been really shocking if I had eaten all of them, like, because I felt like I had to, like, it was some kind of... This is a food contest, yeah. right?